Dear Harstem, the two base raven push is hard to defend with a blink stalker opening. So I chose the Phoenix Colossus build. In the early game I gained some advantages, but I found that even with a slight edge, it was still difficult to defend against the raven push. After successfully defending the raven push and expanding to my fourth base, I realized I was slightly ahead. However, because his micro was better than mine, I decided to harass him while pushing his third. I discovered that in the mid to late game, attacking Terran with blink stalkers and disruptors are, as a protoss was challenging, making it tough to finish the game. I attempted to harass his economy and managed to kill over 120 plus SCVs, but I just couldn't find the right timing and location to close out the game. I am aware that I have more workers, but the mule makes a significant difference and the combination of a planetary fortress with liberators makes it challenging to execute effective harassment. In the late game I made more and more mistakes in multitasking situations compared to him. After some mismanagement and losing my army, I ended up losing the game. I know I am suck compared to Epic, and I made some mistakes in this game. However, I'd like to just point out that in the current patch it is challenging for Protoss to deal with a Raven push and maintain an economic advantage. In the late game, Protoss often relies on Blink Stalkers and Disruptors while utilizing Zealot Harassment. There don't seem to be many other viable options. Now this imbalanced complaint form was sent to me by YSMS, a player from the North American server who is a Grandmaster at not just 5100 MMR, no my friends. He filled in 5100 plus MMR. I'm not sure what that means, that could be really anything about 5100, it could be 5102, which I think is probably what it is, but it could also mean he's 5.5k. It's all very possible. Either way, YSMS, YSMS believes that Terran might be a little bit too strong and there's not enough options for Protoss in the late game. So the question is, is Terran imbalanced or does he suck? And then here we go, my dear friends, with Epic's sending out an SCV to block his opponent's natural. We see a an eBay being uh, landed over here as well immediately. And well, that means that the Zealot most likely is going to be finishing up. Low ground gateway coming out of YSMS. This is one of those things that I'm usually not very fond of. But in the case of fighting against an eBay block, he's going to be pretty happy that the gate is there. Because not only does it scout the SCV, it also means that your Zealot is going to be there quite quickly. Um, we have another SCV that actually is making his way across the map. That's a little bit surprising to me. Um, but so far, honestly, good start, I think, for YSMS. Not a fan of this pylon positioning. It's not really blocking anything in the future, but that's all okay. It is not the end of the world. The depth's going to be chronoed out as well as the Zealot makes his way across the map. It's going to take an alternative route to the Reaper. I'm a little bit surprised to see Epic send this Reaper across the map straight away, rather than trying to find the Zealot, which... I mean, you know that there's a Zealot that got constructed to deal with your eBay. Sh surely it's going to be there somewhere. This is nice control on that Reaper, by the way. That is real nice. Look at that. Dealing quite a bit of damage on that Adept. Zealot's still going to make its way across the map. Bunker is kind of late as well, for whatever reason. Not actually sure why that is. I guess the eBay block delayed that at least a little bit. This Marine now in a bit of trouble, and... I think both of these SCVs are also going to be in trouble. I'm usually not a big fan of sending out a Zealot straight away across the map. This time it definitely does seem to be working out. Reaper, are you gonna die? Yeah, Reaper dies. Okay, well, this game is now officially over. Adept and Zealot versus zero units. Second Adept is on the way as well. Literally all you need to do is just camp this area and you... Well, I'm not saying you pretty much win the game, but the, the Terran player is going to need to add another depot. I need to wait until they have four marines until they can kill this low ground. Well, unless you throw away one adept, I guess. In that case, two marines and a hellion probably will will be quite enough. Like if you're down here with zealot two adept, it's a really, really good situation. And this supply block that Epic finds himself in right now is going to last even longer, which would have been fantastic. Um, Zealot's going to get a couple more kills. As this adept also managed to make its way into the main base. And it's gonna get, well, a kill here on this mule. Eh, it's a, a mule that half life remaining, so... It's still something, but I probably would have preferred just killing another SCV in that case, if he would have been aware of that. Uh, behind this 
Uh, the eco is kind of okay, like it's not brilliant, it's fine. There's no orbital over here yet, so that means there's going to be minus two more SCVs. 25 seconds on the command center. Uh, that is turning into an orbital means that there's just going to be two less SCVs. So yeah, YSMS right now is in a really, really good position. I just can't stress that enough. This Adept is popping out. You can cancel this battery, put the Adept in the wall. This is a good play. This is a good play. I'm not a fan of the double Oracle into robotics facility, but I am a fan of how he's doing most of these other things. Oh, that's both of these uh, Hellions in though, but battery in the main base should mean that no... This went okay, but I just I just want to draw attention to this move. Okay? Just 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 think about just think about the logic behind the play here. Look at this. So he gets in with the Hellion. First Hellion gets in. YSMS sees this first Hellion move in, thinks to himself, you know what? Hellions are always in pairs. This is Noah's Ark after all. Eh, let's move out of the way. Oh, the second one also in. Is technically completely prepared for this by having a battery in the main, but then pulls his workers away from the battery. This is like having an uh, impenetrable fortress and then going outside to Wii because you forgot to build a toilet in inside of it. It's like, what? Loses one worker. Luckily, Epic wasn't controlling this. Otherwise, he might have gotten two worker kills. At the same time, this Oracle is moving in. Um, is now moving away again. Not the greatest defense, but still in a very decent position. There's lots of cash in the bank. A third base is probably very viable right now because you know your opponent literally has no units. There's like nine marines. Well, actually, nine marines and two mines is quite a bit. But at the same time, you have two oracles as well. You're already getting an immortal. A forge before third base. Now, this is something that I never like. I actually think this is really bad. And I'll explain why that is later. Um, but for now, just... Just assume that I'm correct on this. That the forge before the third is a pretty decently sized mistake. Because it means your third is going to be delayed by another 150 minerals. And at the level that we're playing at currently with YSMS and Epic. Epic I think is around like 6k MMR or so on the North American ladder. And YSMS is 5100 plus. I think this is actually a decently sized error. Now we have this immortal popping out. Uh, we have a Nexus on the way and here we see the beauty of the forge in this situation wait what i was gonna make fun of this but he's actually gonna get plus one now, the reason why this surprises me so much is because you really lack gas when you're playing phoenix colossus even so let's imagine that why isms doesn't have brain damage and has this gas entirely saturated with three workers right imagine that is the case now even if that is the case, you're still going to be struggling getting out a Colossus, getting out uh, a Thermal Lens, and having basically continuous Phoenix production. These things all have priority over getting plus one. Right now, plus one got that priority, so Thermal Lens is going to be delayed, making things a lot harder in the potential defense that you have. It means that your Phoenix count most likely is going to be smaller as well, because you're just missing 100 gas. Now, not fully mining from this gas is also really adding up at this point, because... It, it has already mined less, uh, 100 gas less than the other gas, which I think got built at a very similar time, maybe 10, 15 seconds later. Raven is going to get scouted as these uh, phoenixes. Oh, one phoenix does end up dying there. Another phoenix gets hit by a mine. So phoenix count is fairly low. Oracles do manage to stay alive and have some kills as well. Nine kills total already. Of course, some of that is from the early zealot adept harat. And a little bit is from those oracles. Third base is up and is basically fully saturated. We still have no saturation on this gas. Second Colossus, as a result, couldn't really start instantly. Thermal Lens is finally on the way. Phoenix count still low. Another thing that is important to note is that rather than getting plus one, I think charge is much more important when you're playing against, well, tank builds. But just in general, I think charge is just more important initially when you're playing Phoenix Colossus because it allows you to A, deal counter damage with zealot harassment and b if there are tanks it allows you to clean up the position much much easier so plus one is nice but it doesn't have quite the impact that my opponent that, that ysms believes it does and as a result he's now in a well, he's still in a fine position i honestly think he's in a completely okay spot just because of the early game uh, sends out a four zealot run by without zealot legs which is gonna get spotted um i people often don't think about this but if you send out four zealots, 
and they don't deal any damage, you lose 400 minerals. Now, this sounds very simple, but people for some reason, when it is a zealot rump, I don't really seem to care at all about that money. It's the same amount of money as you have with a... Um, like losing a nexus. If you were to lose a nexus straight up, people feel awful about that. But somehow, some way, you send four zealots across the map, lose them for free. They're like, eh, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I still like the attempt, though, there. I think that's good. Um, at the same time, we do have this three zealot run by going in. These two could probably be rerouted towards the third as well. I think that's generally a good move. Super Battery did get shot already, which could be a mistake. Phoenix is now decide to suicide themselves into two Vikings, which is probably also a mistake. There's no real flank setup. I'm not sure how necessary it is. It's only three tanks. Third Colossus is in the back, not really doing anything. And at the same time, we do have these zealots dishing out quite a bit of damage, actually. So they're going to be taking out a bunch of SCVs. 35 workers to 60. Double interference matrix is on these Colossus. The third Colossus now shows up. As there's still three Vikings in the air. These two Zealots could be helping out. Coming in with a flank. Instead they're just chilling. But overall. Despite some mistakes that YSMS made. His early game was so good. With the Zealot Adept thing. That I don't think it really matters. Right now he's in a position where he's up 25 workers. He, he has pretty much finished his infrastructure already. This is a huge deal. When you're playing Phoenix Colossus. Absolutely massive deal. A counterattack is now viable. You could just go for pure Zealot, Colossus, Archon. Boom. Get a Prism. Uh, 10, 15 Zealots. 1, 2 Archons and 2 Colossus. And you still have the 2 Immortals in there as well. Which is fantastic. Instead we're now seeing a, a quick pivot here into Disruptors. As this gas is finally going to get saturated. Fort base is on the way as well. Uh, there's no cannons anywhere, which means that this mine drop might actually deal some damage. Quick response here. Coming out of YSMS. Does he still have a Phoenix? Yeah, he still has a Phoenix. More Stalkers being warped in as uh, this mine indeed is going to get cleaned up. This mine should also get cleaned up. I'm still very surprised to not see a counterattack whatsoever. Because this is such a clean position for a counterattack. Like, it really is. Now, there's one thing that YSMS is, is lacking a significant amount here, and that is map vision. He's completely unaware as to what is kicking off. Has no pylons on the left, has no pylons on the right, has no units in the middle. There is a stasis ward that was probably spotting, well, very close to nothing. Any drop could kill this guy. Like, any, any, any sneaky move from the side could be a, a huge surprise. Despite having 12 stalkers, there's no blink being researched quite yet, which I also think is a is a decent error. And the moment you tech into disruptors, people don't understand this, but the disruptor is a unit that forces you very often to sit back and do nothing. If your army doesn't have any colossus, it's hard to move out on the map, or if it only has one colossus. With disruptors, you often end up defending until your 180, 190 supply. It's tends to be the case so by swiftly uh just kind of transitioning into disruptors he also gave up quite a bit of map control now he's gonna still make his way across the map which i freaking love if this is possible if you can go across the map with disruptors that's always fantastic and at the same time there's actually a zealot run by in the natural this is better than fantastic this is fabulous my friends holy crap this is a nice move so here comes a disruptor shot from a distance moves back appropriately as well realizes that his zealot rumba is doing all the work already so why would he continue fighting with the disruptors a very good call in my opinion zealots are not quite being controlled and end up losing a, a decent chunk and um, we're now moving back in i think that's just kind of yes this is such good play here by ysms this is such good play He's attacking the opponent, forcing the main army to stay here while the zealots are trying to deal damage. Now, in my opinion, we just rinse and repeat this another five, six, seven times. Ideally, we get maybe an observer for vision up here so we know what our opponent is up to. Or if our opponent attacks into it, that should also actually be kind of fine. Interference Matrix does connect with the Colossus as these Vikings are going to take out the final Colossus. And here come the Disruptor shots, not really being controlled. Um, as one out of three gets a minor hit, one out of five gets a minor hit. Okay, eight disruptor shots, and two of them managed to hit something. Maybe seven disruptor shots? Counting remains difficult. He throws them really fast as well. 
and misses all of them. Not a huge fan so far of the control, but this is something that YSMS said as well, that he struggled with the micro. This isn't so much micro, it's just sending a ball on your opponent's units. Like, this really isn't the hard part of playing Protoss, let me tell you that. This really is quite impressive, no? And here comes the Zealot run, but I do like this idea. I would have liked this more if they were an A move. Because right now, they're, half of them are just move commanding majority of the time. Not really doing very much. At the same time, Disruptors here being taken out. I'm not sure how this is possible, that you're losing to four Marauders. Okay, there we go. Finally a hit. And then a hit on his own Stalkers. And then a blink forward into this. I am not sure if YSMS has bad micro or if he believes that he has bad micro and as a result gets the bad micro. Like he's making so many bad moves that don't have anything to do with control but more with decisions that I feel like this is a problem of the brain. More so than a problem of the, the speed of the fingers, you know? So for the people that are not aware, I can actually tell you this, is that the Disruptor, once you shoot its Purification Nova, you can select the Purification Nova and you can right-click it on a Terran unit. And then the Purification Nova will follow the Terran unit and explode on top of the Terran unit. Um, it's really quite easy to do because it only requires two clicks um, rather than having to manually you know, use it. So if you have a lot of Disruptor shots, there can be a good way to go about it often. Here we see... I think in the f for the first time, really, that Epic now is kind of pulling ahead. He has a bigger, a bigger army. He is on the map. Doesn't have any ghosts yet in this army, though. I think he had them earlier, but he must have lost some. Yeah, three ghosts total. It's uncanny how many Disruptor shots have been missed already. I'm very surprised by this. I felt like that was one of the spells that even lower level tosses, like at 5.1k, should be capable of using quite well. We have another Zealot run by, which is now being sent in towards... A planetary base? And there's no planetary quite yet, so I don't entirely hate it. Uh, we see the tank being uh, taken out here right now. So these zealots are just going to walk into their death. Now, this is something that actually bothers me quite a bit. Okay? And this is something that actually bothers me with, with, with Protoss players, okay? Protoss players often complain about the multitasking of Terran and make fun of how little they get controlled. Well, at the same time, it seems to be generally accepted by, by Protoss players that Zealot drum bikes don't have to be controlled. And this is something that annoys me. Because I think that if you have a squad that is worth, what, 800 minerals, that it probably is wise to dedicate a control group to it. You can't make fun of Terrans using F2 for everything and then shift-click command zealots into bases without controlling them. This is 800 minerals that you just lost. And more importantly, the Terran opponent now knows that most likely there's no zealot run by on the map on the left side, which allows him to move freely if he wanted to. So, I mean, that, that, is, that is not harassment, what you're doing. You're just shift-clicking, and we don't really count that as harassment, usually. It's the same with liberators, you know, when Terrans shift-click liberators on top of Zerg bases. That is not really active harassment. They're not gonna... You know, sh Shift-clicking never really counts. Let me tell you that. It doesn't. Fusion core here on the way into the main base for Epic. As we also had... I think we saw double prisms uh, being constructed. I do like this. I think if zealot drum bites aren't working, then zealot fly-ins with a prism are often a very good solution. Here comes a big disruptor attack. Moves the Colossus in... In range of the turret, so that the turret also has something to do. Very kind. Salad run by pops in at the same time. I think a recall probably is a wise decision here now. Maybe wanted to kill that base before teleporting out. Teleports to the wrong base. <laughs> I, I just want to have another look at this entire interaction, okay? So, hey, my man, why is a mess? In this situation, up about what is it like 20 24 workers or so has a zealot run by in his opponent natural steel which uh, is it being controlled yeah uh, not really i don't think it's being a move they're just kind of shift click commanded in once more we have this base that is uh, 183 hp from finishing right now one more shot and it dies and just like that you're uh, up four base versus three base then you can still recall to this base 
be in position to deal with this, push it back, and go for another aggressive push because, well, you're ahead in everything. Instead, my man doesn't select the individual nexus, just clicks whatever nexus, hits the recall button, goes back home, zealot run by still just kind of semi running around. Sometimes an, a zealot hits one or two SCVs and then continues running around so only ends up killing two more workers with those six zealots loses his own base and then doesn't even manage to catch this army so probably the entire worst sequence that was possible here you know if you have like multiple timelines for the, the same event if small things would have gone different i think this was probably the worst one zealot run by does nothing you lose the base you don't get to kill the army uh, and the orbital command yeah stays alive as well very nice. Now, we do have that counterattack that I was talking about. I actually think this is a very good call. I'd love to see one of the two prisms that we have with this army as well. Now, I do appreciate it being in the dead space as some type of expensive spotter. But I really do believe that... What are these purification novas? I really do believe that having a prism here would be nice. This is also the worst angle you could possibly take to engage into. Yeah, decent two purification of us there in the end. This one could hit as well. No, it's not going to. At the same time, Zealot and DT is making their way in towards the main base, which is actually kind of a big deal. I feel like YSMS doesn't quite understand how the disruptor works. The disruptor... Oh, hold that thought. And so we have a... a well, not just a blink-in, also just a walk-in. Just sending, sending in a couple of units. Mine's going to connect as well. Prism died. DT's died. Um, we have two adapts now behind this mineral line, which is quite cute. Work count is 32 to 72. These two purification novas are actually going to hit something. I see two ghosts going down. I, okay, this is it's an interesting way of running away. This is a little bit... Uh, what I was going to say is that the disruptor is a bit like a chicken. But now I have a different, a different way of thinking about it. The disruptor is like having a chicken in a neighbor dispute. Okay. You know, if you have a neighbor dispute, the most logical thing to do is not to talk with them like reasonable people, but is to start egging their house every single day. Now, eggs in the current economy, as we all know, are fairly expensive. So what's a good thing to do? Indeed, you buy one or two chickens, maybe. They provide you with a daily eggs and you egg your neighbor's house every single day. Now, what YSMS did over here is that he threw two eggs. He missed both of the eggs and then decided to throw the chicken as well. Now, the moment you throw the chicken, that is a mistake because not only does the chicken do nothing to the house of the neighbor, they don't have to clean it up, they now have the chicken and you've given them the ammunition to start throwing eggs back at you. So, yeah, sending in the disruptors forward into the Terran army is generally considered a mistake. And that is what YSMS just did there. Now, we have these three mines just laying over here. Having a good old time. It is 34 workers and 67. It is 5 base. Oh! It is 5 base versus what should have been 3, but is in reality 4. Don't forget, this base is technically dead. Is no, th this guy went through the... He saw the light at the end of the tunnel. He went through the light. He, he, he met you know, the people on the other side. They were waiting there near the light he, he was practically in heaven and his body got <laughs> flooped back down this cc all right and repaired back to life fully that's how it went uh dt is gonna get taken out in the natural as this dt in the main is still gonna deal some damage i do like this type of harassment uh, overall resources lost is favored for epic it's kind of what i expected because he's a terran player and terran is uh very powerful in the late game often if they get ghost out is it templar here as well is there storm Dark Templar gets cleaned up. So the mining for uh, Epic right now is better than that of YSMS. Just purely because of the mules. And also maybe because there's a mine here. Actually, that didn't do so much. Oh, this is a good move here by Epic. I really do like that. Hop, EMP, 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 EMP. Yeah, okay, there we go. Took a while. You always want to deny your opponents a recall ability as soon as you can. If you're a Terran player and you have this type of run by, this was a good move. I love these types of army splits. Um, makes it very difficult as well for YSMS, who finally has some map vision. Not a whole lot. He has a Phoenix 
in a location that doesn't scout anything. But this observer is, do is doing quite well. Salad run by being sent into a planetary and liberator zone. And as well as the entire army is going to die. I'd love to see... Oh, more DTs are being sent in. This DT could actually deal some damage. Going to probably kill five, six workers at least. There we go. Well, it's going to get more than six workers if you pull the SUVs against it. There we go. Eight, maybe nine. Can we get nine? Nine. We can't. How oh, frustrating. 57 workers. Now, a, a thing that has been bothering me a little bit this game. Well, first of all, why are we building Archons against someone that already has Ghost Tech? There's like, uh, there's like making balloons while you're living next to uh, Michael van Gerwen. World's greatest darts player. Okay, he's just gonna destroy your balloons. He's not a nice guy to live next to. If you live next to him, you better get a couple of chickens, my friends. Trust me on that. Uh, disruptor shots once again. Not quite connecting. Although that one is pretty good. That one is pretty good. Finally, some huge out of use out of these disruptors. At the same time, Zealot DT run by towards the third base as uh, the army move in here. Oh! It's gonna lose majority of his own stalker immortal army. Let's get a couple of good shots off now with those disruptors. That was, that's actually quite nice. That, that look, this is the first fight where I felt like the disruptor shots did something. You know, like, like what they usually do when we see people use them. Another DT is gonna get sent in here. I'm not quite sure where it's going. It's going all the way around. There's a turret over here. He's aware of that turret as well. This is a this is what we call a risky move. I feel like just moving like this would be much safer. Just the inside and just taking the taking the path over here. This DT might still get in though. We have another uh, epic is so good at sending out these little maneuvers, these little side quests that he has. Like, oh, kill a base and get like seven points. Like, oh, I want those seven points. Poof. He's gonna move in towards the natural. Not a huge fan of that. I would have preferred taking out this base on the right side, as it's still mining. He's gonna snipe the cybernetic score. He's actually going to put himself into a bit of a weird spot here. Oh my god, that's a big purification nova. Same time, DT is still active in the natural as uh, EMP plus Marauder will clean this. This is actually poorly done by, by Epic, but at this point I'm not even sure how much it matters anymore. The only unit that uh, YSMS has right now is the Disruptor. We've seen him use that unit before, and it wasn't so great. It, it was not so great. It's gonna warp in a couple more Zealots. How many Zealots has he lost? 92. Two Archons, 14 Disruptors. It's a lot of Disruptors to lose. 62 Stalkers as well. I hadn't quite expected that. Okay, Purification Nova, you're allowed to shoot him. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, my friends, is why we researched the Blink Upgrade. So that when we shoot a Purification Nova at it, we can... Quickly blink out of the way and pretend like it was intentional. Look at this move. Hey! <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Purification over moving forward. I mean, at this point, the game is fairly over. Epic is getting closer to his 3 3. 25 minutes into the game, the refinery is being taken out. And uh, I, I think it's much easier to harass if you have a significantly better eco than your opponent. Or, well, it's still possible to harass, but at that point you really need to start controlling your units. So it's kind of funny that finally we see these zealots being pulled back after he realizes it's not worth it. Like, you shouldn't just be caring about your zealots once you become poor, you know? It's like, you, you probably should you probably should care about your zealots earlier so you don't become poor. Like, if you're not constantly throwing away 20 zealots for free, move-click commanding them into planetaries and major armies, then you probably don't end up in the situation where you have to do it. You just want to do it because you want to keep the zealots alive and you want them to be as effective as possible. But now in this case, you only have one zealot remaining. So yeah, you're just going to control it, obviously. Yeah, this game is completely over. GG, well played. Wow. Look at that. Uh, very mannered here by YSMS, but... Um, that is really as far as the positive notes go in this game. Because let's face it, you were in a situation in an early game where you were extremely far ahead. You had uh, complete control of the game with the Zealot Adept early on. You kind of messed it up. There's just so many areas in the game. Like there's four or five points in the game where I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, from here on out, the game is unlosable if you just do 
X or if you just do Y. So we start with like the Zealot Adept moving. If you keep your two Adepts plus the Zealot on the low ground, that CC is going to finish so freaking late. The, there will need to be a third depot before the command center even manages to finish. Like I think you'll be up well by probably four or five more workers even than you were up right now it is hugely frustrating for terran for that to happen instead you just send that one adept that was a uh, fairly damaged already into the main base of your opponent and against two marines five scvs and a heli and it just dies for free and as a result you need to give up the position on the low ground that is that is kind of point number one then the second point is after you completely destroy your oppo opponent's push um you're up in workers, you have insane infrastructure. I think it was nine gateways that I saw. You're taking six gases. Um, you can tech into Archon if you want, and you can get a Prism out after a second Colossus. Just do something aggressive with your lead. After you've taken out a bunch of medevacs, all of the bio your opponent has, they can't be on the map anymore. Just push, kill your opponent, or take out at, at least a lot of workers on the third base, right? You have such a huge opportunity there. Instead, what you do is you get disruptors completely giving up map control in the process for whatever reason and as a result epic for the next minute and a half can do some things around the map have a have a blast then you decide to push across the map after you push back his army which i think is a fantastic move um, you're sending in zealots which aren't being micro super efficiently but at least it, it is something once again there i think if you control that very well with with four or five disruptors at his third base while having a zealot run by at the same time i think if you micro that well you're honestly just straight up winning the game i'd be very surprised if you give th th that same situation to max packs and clam if, if max packs wouldn't just straight up win that. now of course you're not max packs and your micro is quite a bit worse but there's so many they, like this is pretty much the story of the game is that you have like th 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 these are just in the first well, nine minutes or so, or first 10 minutes of the game, you already have three opportunities in my mind where you can just literally pick up the game and walk out of it for free. Like, if you can't, like, in StarCraft 2, very often people think about getting ahead very much. And, like, how do I get ahead? Hey, I was behind here. How do I stop that from happening? It's like, well, it doesn't really matter for you anymore because you are capable of getting ahead apparently your early game was was good enough your decisions there were fine but then you seem to be completely incapable of actually finishing a game i'm not sure if you can't make the correct decisions or if your control is just too bad that you can you don't dare fighting it feels like you have no will to really win like you just want to get ahead and then be ahead forever but never really commit to anything big it to, to me this just makes no sense now on top of that your map vision was absolutely uh, abhorrent your control well generally was quite bad um your macro was very good i enjoyed your macro and i think your compositions were fine as well you complain about compositions saying <coughs> Protoss often relies on blink stalkers and disruptors while utilizing zealot harassment. There don't seem to be many other viable options. Well, DTs with blink are also a viable option. Of course, those need to be controlled, which might be an issue for you. Um, but also, it is kind of normal that in the late game, like having an, an, an army that consists of four or five different unit types and that kind of complement each other, that's kind of the standard in late game for all races. Like, for Terran, you could say, well, we they have to rely on Marauder, Medivac, Ghost, and Liberator. She's like, yeah, they they do. Like, what's your point? Like, you had Blink Stalkers, Disruptor, Zealots, and DTs. It's not like you were trying something new and it failed, and you're complaining about the fact that you can only use one unit comp. It's like, you used the unit comp, you just used it inefficiently and ineffectively. Like... I, I, I don't really know what to make of this entire imbalance complaint form. Uh, the only thing that I can really say about it is that you suck. Oh, and you sucked hard. And that, my dear friends, is going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this episode. Is it in or do I suck? If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to send in your own imbalance complaint form. You can do that uh, by going to the link in the description. Uh, there's a form link there. Fill it in. And uh, perhaps next week, you'll be the one uh, getting to complain to me. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Ciao, ciao.